Yo guys, Punk on another video. Dragon Ball release is right around the corner, and I mean really right around the corner. Whether you agree with it or not, it's happening, and there isn't really much that we can do about it at this point, to be honest. Even though I see some issues with an early release like this, for newer players at least, it's really not the end of the world, and I'm definitely still excited for it personally. So I've made two videos on the topic so far, one monologue style video covering the initial announcement, and another edited video giving a total overview of what to expect from the release of this dungeon and how it's going to affect the game. I've also heard a bunch of people talking about how the Dire Maul release is going to affect the economy in a large way, they're saying gold is going to inflate like crazy and severely affect prices, for the most part, I think that this is overstated. It's a bit of an alarmist take. While it will affect the economy for sure, it's not going to be to a catastrophic extent like some will have you believe. But nonetheless, there's tons of gold to be made during this phase of content. So get ready to stuff your wallet with gold coins. Now obviously, that's the topic of this video. All the gold farms available in Dire Mall. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so first on the list out of all of these farms, let's cover the most common run, and not to mention the one with the lowest barrier to entry, Lasher Runs. This specific farm run has been a common gold farming strategy since original vanilla back in 2005. In fact, it was really really popular in 2005 and then later got nerfed significantly in 2006. So it's been prevalent for a really long time, unlike some of these which have been perfected and become more common over the years of private server play. This farm takes place in Dire Mall East, which is the lowest level dungeon out of the three, North, East, and West, which also doesn't require a key to gain access either. In fact, you don't even need to be level 60 to execute on this farm at all. You could start in your mid-level 50s, although that's mainly true for mages. So that's why I mentioned it as a low barrier to entry. Not to mention that the farm is really simple to execute. So right as you enter DM East, you're perched over a courtyard with massive overgrowth protruding through the gap. Down in that courtyard are a ton of plant-based enemies. The packs that we're looking for down there are the Lashers. They're big groups of little sapling type creatures scattered across the entire courtyard floor. The idea is really simple, go from pack to pack of lashers, group them up and AoE them down, loot everything and then reset. You can do this farm on most classes that can AoE. Mages of course are the best, priests can do it with Holy Nova, Warlocks can do it with Voidwalker Sacrifice, Pyroclasm and Voidwalker AoE Taunt, a mix between Hellfire and Reign of Fire. Paladins can do it, maybe Shamans with their AoE Blast Totem, possibly, I'm pretty sure. And also, I think maybe a Geared Warrior can do it as well, but don't take my word on it. Now the reason it's such a good farm is due to the loot table on these Lashers. Firstly, they drop Vendor Trash, which has a really nice cumulative value to it. They can also drop a variety of different high level herbs, even Dreamfoil and the likes, and I've also heard rumors of Black Lotus having a chance of dropping off of these as well, although that might be a private server thing that has not been confirmed yet, I guess we'll find out with the release of Classic Dire Mall. And they also drop Living Essence at a really really nice rate, which right now are selling I think for around 8 gold on my server and have an even higher value once AQ40 comes out due to the heavy need for nature resist gear. Oh, and of course, not to mention that they have a chance to drop epic items and just items in general. So this is a really solid farm. You get a ton of vendor trash and nice little perks on top of that as well. Now here's another one that involves a very similar path in the same exact dungeon, Dire Mall East. It again involves dropping down into the courtyard down below, but on this farm, we're going to be ignoring all of the mobs on that floor level of the courtyard and wrapping alongside the walls until we reach the tunnel leading to the mid portion of the dungeon. This is called jump runs, which are generally not done as a solo farm, but rather something that you do in a two to three man group, ideally two so you can split the profits a little bit better. This run is more similar to Maradon solo farming, where you're going through the dungeon, avoiding most of the trash, pretty much all of the trash, and pinging specific bosses for vendor blues and pre-raid items if you need them. So you'll jump down there and work your way around the walls like I just stated until you get to the tunnel, then make it into Hydro Spawn room where you can just quickly finish him off, although beware of the knockback as to not aggro extra mobs by being knocked into them, then you work your way to the satyr boss, and it's really important to have an interrupt here so make sure one of the two people can interrupt the ability unless you're over geared and you can survive through the sacrifice ability since it heals him, although it kind of makes it a lot less efficient, then once he's dead, you go back to the courtyard and talk to this mega tree dude and he'll open the door to the last boss's room. You then jump onto this pillar 
jump down, and then execute the final boss of the dungeon. Now, if you want to make this farm way better, it's really useful to have mining or herbalism near max for this specific farm, since there's ghost mushrooms all over the place on your way, which sell for a really nice amount, pretty much one gold plus each. And behind the final boss in his room, you've got a carved out tunnel which leads outside of the dungeon. There's a chance for two to three thorium nodes that can spawn alongside the tunnel walls. Thorium, of course, being the most lucrative and most sought after ore in the entire game right now, so guaranteed thorium for potential arcane crystals as well as dense stones alongside it on an instance lockout, meaning there's no competition, is very, very nice. Not to mention the tunnel leading out basically just brings you back to the entrance, ready to reset the instance and just go over and over again in that nice little loop. You don't have to have an alt or a friend in your group and then log out for him to reset the ID for you. And of course, you can get dusty tomes as well on top of everything that I just mentioned, but we'll cover that better later on. Okay, next we've got Hound Runs, which is something that isn't really viable for most classes, but it's a really nice farm for those who can execute on it, that being mages, warlocks, priests. So for this run, we're headed to Dire Mall North, where again, we've got a courtyard, except this time it's littered with massive ogre packs and roaming hound packs too. Or maybe hyenas, they look the same as the hyenas from Tenaris. So for this one, it's a little bit more interesting than just pulling groups of lashers and killing them. You actually need to focus on your movement. So if you see right here, we've got a little bit of a ledge that lines the entirety of the wall. And attached to that ledge, we have a ramp that heads up to the entrance at the top level. The idea here is to pull a bunch of the roaming hound packs get them up the ledge so the dogs will basically run all the way around get up the ledge and then start running the whole wall to make it towards you at this point you can either start spreading dots to all of them you can hit them if you're a hunter you can multi shot and cast serpent stings you can mage aoe them and then as they make their way towards you they get too close it's time to jump down and then they're going to go all the way back the same path that they came from except the opposite way, which will stall for time. And while this is happening, you can get back up on the ramp, jump back on the ledge, and then they're gonna turn around and start going back the other way, get up on the ledge and start running towards you and you just rinse and repeat, you have the dogs in a limbo. You can just keep doing this over and over again until all of the doggos have been slain. This is a really nice farm, specifically if you have skinning, of course. All right, now this one is probably the most talked about and maybe the most well-known one in general. It's called the DM North Solo Tribute Run. So if you don't know what a tribute run is, it's killing the final boss in DM North by skipping or not killing all of the guard bosses within the dungeon. I know three classes that can solo this specifically, the Hunter, the Priest, and the Druid. Although, knowing the classic community, we might see some other classes that can somehow pull it off eventually. So I'll quickly explain how to do it on a Hunter. Essentially, you're gonna be using your pet to aggro mobs and then running through into specific safe zones and then feign death after your pet dies or maybe you'll out of range your pet and he'll just disappear, then you'll feign death and you'll slowly make your way through the entire dungeon, skipping all of the guards in the process. Once you get to the second boss who's guarding the entrance to the final boss, you pretty much do the exact same thing again. Again, you send your pet through, you get around the corner, and then you feign death, and then you can finally make your way to the final boss. For the King of the Ogres, it's pretty simple. There's a couple different strategies that you use, but the most common one used nowadays is basically just kiting him around with Serpent Sting and auto attacks. He's got a circular platform with kind of like a road that goes around it, and you could basically either run in circles around, or you can go up, and then as he gets up and follows you up, you just jump off of the platform, then he jumps down, similar to how you were kiting the dogs. You just keep doing that over and over again, keeping the boss in, again, a limbo state. Once you've finished him off, you've completed a tribute run since you skipped all of the guards. You'll now be crowned the king of the ogres, so the entire instance will become friendly to you, and you can claim the tribute bounty, so you get the loot off the final boss, and you get the three blues that drop off of the chest, plus health pots, mana pots, food, water, and also a chance at a green. So that's really nice gold value to begin with. Just the mana potions, if you get five of them, is like 15 gold. And it's very common to get three to five mana potions in one chest. Now after you claim kingship of the ogres, you can now run through the entire instance without aggroing anything because you're the king and everything is friendly to you. This is when you start looking for dusty tomes. So you can go around on your way out and look at all the spawn locations for dusty tomes and maybe even get supplemental gold gain on top of your farming route. Not to mention you get all the world buffs, which allows you to farm it even more effectively. Druids will do this same thing basically just by stealthing through and then casting Moonfire and Insect Swarm on the boss and just kiting him around. And priests, I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but you guys can Google DM North Tribute Run Priest and you'll figure it out. This is widely known as the best gold farm in the entire game, at least from my knowledge. I'm not sure if there's anything better, but I've seen crazy claims of like 100 gold per hour for hunters. Also keep in mind if you're not one of the classes, hunter, druid, or priest, 
You can do this in a two-man group, specifically rogues, I guess, and maybe other classes. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I've seen like rogues and druids do this together, or maybe a rogue in another class. If you can manage to somehow make your way through, even on a non-stealth class, there might be ways to two-man farm this, and it's still pretty good in terms of gold gain. All right, now this one is one of the most pleasant farms. It's not necessarily the best and most consistent one, considering how heavily it relies on RNG. I mean, you can go with hours without getting anything, really. But it's very relaxed, perfect for just mindlessly doing it while watching hentai on your second monitor. And we're talking about stealth book farming. I quickly alluded to this during the jump run segment, or maybe it was the lasher farm, I'm pretty sure it was the jump run. And I also alluded to Dusty Tomes in the DM North tribute runs. And of course I mentioned it to a decent extent in the last video, but all over DM, there's spawn points where Dusty Tomes can appear. These are interactable objects which can be looted for a chance at any of the DM books, like the books which give the Eldreth the last trinkets, or Foro's Compendium of Dragon Slaying, which is used to attain Kelsarar, the epic tanking sword. So as I stated, there's set spawn locations. So if you're a rogue or a druid, you can stealth up to the dusty tome, loot it, move on, and it just gives you a chance at a big boom in gold if you get the right book. It's a bit of a gamble, they're quite rare, but people love doing this since you can get a large sum of gold in one shot with pretty much very little effort, just time investment. Also note that DM instances are all connected, meaning if you have the key to move through the tunnels or lock picking, you can make your way through the tunnel system from DM West to DM North or whatever it is, and extend your book farm across multiple dungeons. Now a little trick that I like to use is always have Barov's Peasant Collar, where if ever you happen to get aggro or there's a book near a pack of mobs, you could just spawn all of Barov's Peasants, and while they're tanking the enemies, just loot the book and then vanish. Or have Gnomish Cloaking Device, where you can just turn invisible and just basically it's an extra vanish. Or if you're a druid and you don't have access to a vanish, it gives you a one hour cooldown vanish just in case. So you get a good book, pop it on the auction house and make a couple hundred gold, easy money. All right, now this is not necessarily a farm per se, but it is a way of making gold that you can get from access to Dire Mall specific rewards. So with the release of Dire Mall, there's a bunch of recipes that are coming to the forefront. We've got the Enchanted Thorium set, which is an incredibly good pre-raid tank set, more for mitigation and not for TPS, but still this sells like crazy on the auction house. We've got Shifting Cloak, Hide of the Wild. Hide of the Wild is probably the most sought after pattern and item in general out of Dire Mall's recipe list entirely. We've got Chromatic Cloak, Belt of the Archmage, Felcloth Gloves, Inferno Gloves, Mooncloth Gloves, Cloak of Warding. Cloak of Warding is quite good since it's got uh, extra armor and that's good on bear tanks. Girdle of Insight, kind of useless. Mongoose Boots, which are average, I guess, pretty decent starter boots. And Swift Flight Bracers, which are really nice for hunters. So if your plan is to farm mats and sell items on the auction house, this can be a pretty decent way to make money with the right pattern, of course. So check it out, check what's selling, what's compatible with the professions that you have, and you might be able to make a decent amount of gold with this. Now, this is something connected to that, that a lot of you guys might get mad at me for. This is kind of information that certain gold farmers and gold makers like to keep on the hush hush on the down low in order to keep people away from it. But honestly, I always let you guys in on the gold making secrets, at least the ones that I'm aware of. For this one specifically, you only have a couple of days now to really capitalize on it. But if you have a good amount of capital, you can invest in equity, then sell it off for profit come release of Dire Mall. We just spoke about all these recipes. You know, some are really, really lucrative or really sought after since they offer pre-raid items that are in some cases far superior to anything that's available right now. So check out all of the mats that are used in some of the best items, analyze the prices, and maybe make some investments in some materials that you think will increase in value once the patch hits and everyone is looking to craft that specific item. <coughs> Hide of the wild, <coughs> larval acid. So there you have it friends. As you can see, Dire Mall really changes the landscape in terms of gearing up for raids and grinding gold. There's so many different gold farms coming up. So get ready to get grinding boys. Like usual, I hope this video was useful to you and hopefully it was informative and hopefully it was also enjoyable if you did enjoy it and want to see more like it make sure to leave a like comment subscribe of course you know the drill soldiers hit the notification bell to be notified every single time i post a new video straight out of the render oven and with that said thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace